Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how to add heat transfer vinyl to your cups using the Arteza Glittered Heat Transfer Vinyl Set. I will have a link to where you can find this down in the description box below. It's a great way to use up any of your old like heat transfer vinyl scraps or just to add like a small pop of glitter detail to your cups with pretty minimal effort. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so for this design, I'm using the nine ounce sippy cup from Craft Haven. It has this cute little lid with the handles. Um, and because this lid screws on, we really want to take note about where the lid goes on this one so we don't put our, de our decal in the wrong spot later on. So I'm just gonna mark um, the you know front and center of the cup or you know mark whatever side that you're going to be putting your decal on when the lid is on so that way you know um, and I just make a small little mark on the inside of the cup with my sharpie marker that I can refer to later uh, when I put my decal on and make sure that it's positioned right when those that lid and the handles are on okay and don't worry about getting any sharpie marker on the inside of the cup it comes right off of stainless steel with a little bit of 91 percent rubbing alcohol or acetone okay so once we've got that marked i'm just going to take a small section of pool noodle and shove that in there and then i'm going to put my cup arm in you do not need to glue the pool noodle to the cup arm only reason I'm using the pool noodle instead of a traditional cup chuck um, is because I don't have a size for the smaller one. So I'm just making one real quick. This pool noodle is a two and a half inch pool noodle. Um, after I get everything in there, I'm just going to shove it down with this acrylic scraper thing. You don't have to do this. You just really want to make sure that that pool noodle is all the way in there and clears the edge of the cup so you don't get any like epoxy or anything stuck to your pool noodle and your cup at the same time because <laughs> that can be messy. Next, I'm just going to sand my cup really quickly with some 80 grit sandpaper to prep it and then I will spray it off with some rubbing alcohol. Additionally, you could take this in and wash it with some dish soap and water and then get it completely dry before we move on to spray painting it. And for this design, I'm just gonna spray paint it with a really pretty orange spray paint that I have. Uh, this is just like a regular Rust-Oleum orange. I think it's that, no, it's a gloss spray that I bought a long time ago and it's lasted me a long time. Uh, and after my paint dries, I'm just gonna apply less than one milliliter of epoxy and make sure I have that spread onto my cup nice and even and no lines. Once I get my epoxy spread on there, I'm just gonna let my cup sit for two to three minutes to make sure that all those lines kind of settle out and everything's nice and smooth before I apply my glitter. The glitter colors that we're using today are a mix of freckles, which is like pretty metallic orange, Rio, which is like more of an iridescent orange, and it's pecan. So I mix these in three equal parts for this really pretty pumpkin color. I will have the names of the glitter, where you can find it, and a discount code linked in the description box below. And we're just going to kind of dump it on here. Um, Again, I really like to make sure I get all the area of the cup covered first and then I will go back and just let it rip over the entire thing to make sure I have good even coverage. Once you get your cup fully coated with glitter and everything looks good, you're going to want to let that sit for about two to three hours to dry before you move on to your first layer of epoxy. All right, so now I'm gonna show you how I designed the decal. I just have my Inkscape open. I'm gonna click File, Open, and I already have my image that I'm using saved to my desktop, so it's easy to find. 
After I open my image, I'm going to select it and we're going to hit, I think it's path or something like that. And then we're going to hit um, path, trace bitmap, remove background, threshold's going to be at 45 and then we're going to click OK. Then I'm going to go to path outset and you'll notice that when I click that it got a little thicker. Then I went to path outset again. I clicked path outset three times and then I went to fill and clicked on the X. Then I went to stroke path and clicked on the solid box, which showed me an outline of exactly how thick my outset is. I did click path outset again to make it just a little bit thicker. Then I'm gonna go back to fill and click the solid little box. So um, here I'm just left with my outset image. So. We're going to save this by clicking export as I'm going to save it to my desktop and then hit export and then we're going to go to Cricut Design Space and I'm going to upload both the original image of the jack-o'-lantern face and the offset that I just created into Inkscape. So I explained how to do this before in my offset peekaboo design. I'm just kind of going over it again. And it's pretty much the same process. So we're just gonna load both of these images into design space and then I will layer them and then slice them. So I've got them both up here. I'm going to resize these so that they're a little bit more manageable for me to work with. And then I'm going to change the color of the offset version of the face so that it's easier for me to kind of maneuver, if you will, the uh, original file over it and uh, just so I could see better. Um, I'm also going to select both of these and make them a little bit bigger just so I could really see where the center of that outline is. And really all I'm trying to do is resize and center the original jack o lantern face inside of that offset version so that I could slice it into just an outline. So I'll show you what I mean here. We're gonna select both of them. We're gonna center them. That looks good. So I'm going to select them both again and hit slice. And then I'm only going to keep the original file and the outline that I created there. Then I'm going to select them both again. I'm going to recenter them. And I'm going to size these to about two and a half for the height and about three inches for the width. And that is the size I want both of these for my cup. So now we're ready to cut our vinyl. Now, I, in hindsight, if I were to re-record this, I would not have mirrored um, this particular image. Usually you want to mirror heat transfer vinyl when you're cutting it, um, but for this particular design, it wasn't necessary. I also made the mistake of mirroring my heat transfer vinyl image, but I didn't mirror what would later be my gold vinyl image. Um, and that caused some trouble for me later on. So learn from my mistakes. So we're just gonna get these images cut out and then I will show you how we get these on the cup. All right, so just uh, weed your heat transfer vinyl like you normally would. The nice thing about this heat transfer vinyl is it's got that sticky transfer paper thingy uh, that it's stuck to. Uh, so it's really easy to weed. And I also cut and weed that gold vinyl one that I'm gonna use for the outline later on. And you're just gonna wanna place this on your cup where you want it. Now my cup has already been epoxied, it's cured. Um, for at least 12 hours. I did sand it smooth before I started on this step. And 
Um, we're just going to try and kind of cut some of that plastic transfer sheet a little bit so that the vinyl lays more flat onto the cup before we apply our heat. Also, if you are using the same kind of screw on lid cup, make sure that you are applying this decal to the correct side so that the handles don't cover it up later. Remember, we went over that earlier in the tutorial. You also want to measure twice. Make sure you have your decal totally straight because once this is on there, it is not going to come off. <laughs> so I'm just making sure everything's lined up and straight. Everything's stuck on there nice and securely with the sticky transfer tape paper thingy. Uh, and then I'm going to use my like heat gun. Um, this is an old embossing heat gun from Recollections I've had for way too long. It's still kicking. And you're just going to carefully go over your design with the heat. Don't leave the heat in one spot for too long because you don't want to like totally melt your epoxy. Uh, so you can also do this with one of those little Cricut easy press things, the little miniature ones, or they even make little hand irons that you could also use. But I just already have a heat gun and so that's why I'm using it. <laughs> so anyway, you're just gonna go over it until you activate the adhesive on the back of that heat transfer vinyl and it sticks to the cup. Uh, you'll want to, you know, double check before you start removing your transfer sheet that it has in fact stuck to the cup before you remove the transfer sheet. Also, once you've got everything stuck on there and you have your transfer sheet removed, I do like to go over it just one more time with my heat gun to make sure. You'll also notice that I'm using a stainless steel ruler to kind of press down those pieces. Uh, that's because it's super hot <laughs> and I don't want to burn myself. So if you have like a butter knife or like, a, like I'm using here a stainless steel ruler or something, um, something that you can flat that you can use to press down on those pieces without directly touching the cup right after you put the heat on there because um, it again it is super super hot all right so we've got our vinyl on there securely so now i'm going to move into my epoxy coat for this one i did apply uh, 15 milliliters of epoxy i let that dry for eight hours then i applied a second layer of epoxy which was also 15 milliliters and then i let that dry for a full 12 hours i did sand the rim and any other places that needed some light sanding and now i'm just going to apply those gold vinyl outlines that I created earlier now again if you remember I mentioned have like I didn't mirror the outline image so it was a little bit hard for me to line up uh, but if you're gonna be doing this um, you'll want to just kind of cut them into sections it makes it a lot easier than trying to apply it all at once uh, and obviously this is completely optional I just thought it was the cutest a little detail on this cup also, if you're wondering why I didn't apply those gold vinyl pieces in the same layer that I applied the heat transfer vinyl is because I wanted to create some depth with those decals. Also, that gold vinyl would look like wrinkly against the edges of the heat transfer vinyl and I didn't want that. Uh, and then after this, uh, I did just press down my vinyl really well. I didn't seal it like I normally would just because this wasn't too detailed of a vinyl design. And then I went into my final coat of epoxy and we were done. So that's it for this tutorial. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Again, I just wanted to show you a fun and easy way to apply heat transfer vinyl to your cups. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you Saturday. If you love this video, you could check out our last video here. Also be sure to find us on Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, and of course subscribe for all our new videos that come out every Wednesday and Saturday. Thanks so much for watching. See you soon.